and welcome to Wesley Impact. On the show today, I'm going to be continuing studies in 1 Thessalonians, today in chapter 2. We'll take a look at the world of bullying through the life of one Sydney schoolgirl and how Wesley Mission's Operation Hope programme supports young people at risk. Now, our guest on the show today shares his own roller coaster journey in search of identity and self expression. For years, Peter Noble scribbled, scratched, and sprayed his sign all over Sydney, only to be caught red handed during a raid in his home. To talk more about his move from graffiti to God and his passion to preach using rap in outreach, we welcome Peter to the show. But Peter, it's great to have you. Thanks for having me, Keith. Look, um, I have to tell you, I have to be honest with you, you know, we have a programme at Wesley Mission, you know, getting rid of graffiti. <laughs> it's a whole programme with young people moving graffiti off walls, and there you were putting it on the walls. So, so you, you're a stakeholder in a wrong kind of way here. Yeah, it could have given me a job. <laughs> yeah. At 19, 12 undercover police uh, raided your home. Now, that is a wake-up call in, in literally but a wake-up call for you in your life. Mm, that's right, no, quite serious. Um, it was uh, yeah, about mid-2006, and uh, I think not everyone needs a knock on the door on police to wake them up about the direction that they're heading in their life. But, uh, yeah, it was quite a, a sobering moment. Were your family aware that you were doing this? Yeah, some of them. So my parents knew that I was getting into graffiti. Like they've, they've known about my lifestyle as a teenager for some time. But I think there came a point where they had to kind of just uh, let me go, if you know what I mean, like yeah. the prodigal son. Yeah. And there's only so much you can do. Yes. Yes. Look, and you've, there's a pun on that in your uh, CD, really, isn't it? How, how great they are, where you actually right. use art, but you now use it creatively mm. in ministry. It's a subculture I think a lot of people will struggle to understand, um, the, the, the mark in turf, so to speak. You know, mm. Can you give us a... Um, some understanding as to what, what it's all about? About graffiti? or uh, Well, so graffiti in general is one of the elements of hip-hop, uh, which is a culture made up of four elements, um, graffiti, uh, DJing, breakdancing, and uh, MCing, which is rapping. Yeah. And uh, so those are the four main elements. Um, graffiti was my first one, love and, uh, and passion. And then uh, later on now, I've picked up an, um, another element, which is the rapping. Yeah. So, uh, so people refer to hip-hop as the element, but yeah. it's also hip-hop is a culture as well. It's also um, a, like a, uh, a clothing culture. Um, it's, it's what we wear and uh, it's sort of an attitude, it's a fashion. It's hats. It's hats, <laughs> so th thank you for allowing me to wear one. But um, yeah, so, uh, and pretty much, um, yeah, so that's what hip-hop is. Okay, look. Um, you were arrested and then a friend invited you to a church meeting. Those two were important. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so around the time I got arrested, maybe a little bit before, um, I met a, a, a young uh, lady named um, Altamira. And uh, through her, being able to connect with her, uh, she invited me to a church out in uh, Windsor. In, uh, and I came along and um, I, I've grown up in the church. My, my parents are Christian, but uh, I wasn't, definitely wasn't walking with God at the time. And uh, it wasn't until uh, she invited me. Was this a bolt of lightning then? Well, that, that friendship was critical, uh, Keith, you know, in uh, the fact that through her, uh, you know, I wasn't walking as, as, a, as a follower of Jesus at all, uh, but she was. She was She was the hands and feet of Jesus to me. And, uh, and through her, I was able to essentially be discipled, if you would, and, and yeah. hear the gospel, and I was able to see it. Yes. Uh, naturally, I was... Um, you know, uh, attracted to her, mm. uh, you know, I, I can't, uh, you know, it's, it's quite obvious, but, but through that friendship, I was able to, um, uh, able to actually see the gospel and, uh, yeah. But you didn't have to go to prison, but you did get a sentence. Yeah, so the official word is, uh, from my lawyer, before the conviction all went down, was that, um, uh, he said that you'd be looking at a, a suspended jail sentence at, uh, at the least. Yeah. Um, he said it's possible. It, it wasn't the um, it wasn't the nature of the offence. It was the volume of the offence. So, um, so for those listening, it was originally um, I got charged. I think with 19 charges, and then I think it got built up. And then it was 23 charges after my arrest. They added a few more on, and then it went up to 27. Yes. And then uh, the court case went for um, for a year and a half. And mm. uh, in the end, my my lawyer stuck, struck a deal with the prosecution for mm. to plead guilty to 10 charges. So we'll come back to that. And thanks for giving us that insight in it that you've clearly built on in a ministry today. Before we talk more about that journey to committing uh, uh, life to Christ, I'd like to introduce today's performer on the show. Two young performers from Brisbane-based band Sapphire have joined us to share a song that fits with Peter's story in a way and his struggle to find truth in his life. It's called Hold My Heart. How long must I pray, must I pray to you? How long must I wait, must 
Garner's new book, A Word for the World, is now available. Dealing with the four themes of success, sorrow, society, and spirituality, the 16 sermons in this book will definitely inspire and challenge you as you read. The book also includes a DVD featuring interviews with Nick Farr Jones, Lee Hatcher, Tanya Plibersek, and Margaret Somerville. For more information on A Word for the World, please contact us on 9263 5555 or at impacttv at wesleymission.org.au. That music was great. And if you want to know more about the band Sapphire, details are going to be online all this week. We're back with hip hop youth leader, Peter Noble. It's now been eight years since you picked up a, a spray can. So we're quite safe here today. Uh, but you, you now have a desire to become an army chaplain. Um, tell us a bit about that. Well, um, <clears throat> uh, six months after my conviction, uh, I finished my community service uh, I was married actually a month after my conviction and uh, so, so six months on I, my wife and I believed that it, uh, God was calling me to join the military and uh, by God's grace I was enlisted in July 2008 and uh, I've spent five years as a full-time soldier mm. in the regular army and uh, I think in that time I, I worked as a QE in uh, Sydney in Holsworthy and uh, when I came to the end of my time I pretty much decided that uh, uh, I really felt called to become a chaplain in the military and mm. to do that uh, I would need to go study and get a, a Bachelor of Theology. So uh, I did just that, discharged and uh, moved to Melbourne mm. and here I am, I'm, I'm one year on and I've only got two years to go. 
Great. And look, um, you've also reconnected, it's an interesting part of the story really, isn't it? You've reconnected with some of the officers that were involved in uh, the investigation and eventual yes. arrest. Yes, so uh, if you're watching, uh, Const well he's actually ex-police now, but uh, Simon Judge, he's, uh, he was the senior prosecutor of the case. And uh, we, yeah, him and uh, Scott Robinson was the other one, other gentleman, and uh, we, we we actually managed to connect a couple of times, and I just think we developed quite a close relationship through the court proceedings. Mm. And uh, but when the court case was all finished, um, it's just remarkable. Uh, I got to connect with him after my recruit graduation of the military. I contacted him and I emailed him some photographs of myself graduating, yeah. and I said, oh. I said, hey, mate, here, you can stick these on your morale board. Yeah. And he said to me, he said, oh, that is, a, I mean, he's not a Christian, yeah. but uh, he said to me, you know, Pete, that is phenomenal. He said, I've never seen anyone. He said, oh, I see a lot of dudes come through the police, get yep. criminal history. Yeah. He said, I've never seen that before. Yeah. Look, I think that's, uh, that's an important part of the story, really, isn't it? That it's a positive one. Mm. Uh, quite a number of years ago, I, I, I preached for Billy Graham in, in India. And I know you and I have done some work with, with Will Graham, his grandson. That's right. Um, I, out here. He's done a bit of ministry at Alice and other places in, in, yeah. uh, around, but also uh, his tour. What, what did you do with him and where was that? Uh, basically, um, I was invited to come and perform uh, as a bit of a promotional uh, campaign at Lithgow, yes. uh, in Lithgow High. Uh, and I think um, Justice Crew was there as well. And uh, so actually, actually, my wife and I were up together uh, in the early days. She's a mother now, full time. Yeah. But uh, so she came down with me and uh, yeah, and we were there with William and got to promote uh, a really big evangelism outreach mm. and uh, promote mm. the gospel. It was quite mm. an honour. And you're going on tour next, next month. Tell us uh, that and how people can find out more about that. Uh, it's actually um, November we're going and it's be for about five weeks. And uh, if you want information, just um, search me on the web for Nobi One and uh, all the information's on our, on our uh, website. Mm. So. And that's going to be something you want to do on a regular basis while you can? Well, definitely. Uh, so this year uh, I've been able to, um, I was... Uh, actually won a, a mission travel grant for $10,000. And uh, so by God's grace, I'm able to use that to do this tour. Um, so, and I'd like to be doing it annually. That's, so, yeah. Sure, sure. Well, we'll watch and see how that ministry has, has developed. But uh, look, suppose somebody is into something. May, look, graffiti may just be one thing, but their life is, is, is running out of control in, in that way, in some way. Mm. You can't really put your finger on, on how can I get out? What would you say to somebody like that? Gosh, I think, um, yeah, it's a hard question, Keith. I think, um, you know, I think under every person who's struggling with issues, I think their life is searching for meaning. Uh, deep down, you know, for me, uh, graffiti, writing my name on a wall, doing pieces, painting trains, you know, like you're searching to leave your mark on history. I, you know, I was there, I did that. Sure. Um, so for anyone who's sort of doing that, you know, it doesn't matter what element of hip-hop it is, it doesn't matter what you do, um, I think everybody wants to... To, to leave behind a legacy of some kind. Um, but I think the more that you pursue that, the more it is, uh, as the Bible says, it's fleeting. It's, um, it's, it's kind of, uh, you know, it's, it's grass in the wind. So what I would say is, I would say, if you want to know your purpose, if you want to know your true calling, then I would say, uh, search out the God that made you. Look, many times I'm on a train or I'm going somewhere, I think, how did anybody get there to spray that on? But I think the story really is this, <laughs> no matter where you get yourself to, <laughs> God can reach you in that place. And, and I'm just yes. grateful that you've come on the show and shared something of your story. Mm. Um, so we look forward to, to, to uh, talking more with you maybe later on at some other, uh, other point. But at this point in time, I'm going to be back in just a moment. It's been 200 years since the first Methodists met in Australia. To celebrate two centuries of faith and pioneering care, CEO and presenter Reverend Dr Keith Garner takes us back to where it all began. But we don't begin here at the heart of London. We begin in a town in the north of England. In this fascinating narrative, Reverend Garner chronicles the history of the life and times of the founder of Methodism, John Wesley. This fresh and thought-provoking documentary takes us on a journey throughout the United Kingdom, beginning in John Wesley's hometown of Epworth. John Wesley was born here on the 17th of June, 1703. This one-hour DVD travels on to his education years and beginnings of social justice in Oxford, to his final years in London. For more information on John Wesley, the man and his mission, call 02 9263 5555 or email us at impacttv at au. At Wesley Mission, we have a heart to, to help and come alongside young people, particularly when all of life's hope and dreams seem far away. 
Alicia is one person who's been supported by our youth services in Newcastle. And I was there recently and it was wonderful to see how she was going on. The centre supports young people between the ages of 12 and 25. And it's a service that's been running now since 1965. Let's take a look together. <music> Alicia and when I was eight, I slept in a bus shelter. That was when I was first in the streets. I decided to leave after pretty much being violated in my own bedroom by mysterious people who I wouldn't really know. That was really hard on me, so I ended up jumping from my mate's houses, couch surfing and going back home every now and then to get more clothes, getting away from my mum. And it was off and on until I was about 16. And when I was 16, I was living with my dad and my stepmom at the time. And up leaving there because after I left there, I was in the Nexus ward for really high depression and nearly committing suicide. This place used to be my winter home when I was in the streets. I used to put a candle up here for a bit of light here. And in the corner down there, I used to put a candle there with a pillow on the corner there with a blanket on the bottom and a sleeping bag. When I used to live here, I used to think, am I going to wake up? Am I going to get woken up in the middle of the night by a stranger? Or am I going to die because I'm not enough warmth for my blankets or clothes? I met Alicia when she was about 16. Like she would come here with friends, but she didn't engage straight away. Like she'll come in, you say hi, and how you going? Do you need any help? She'll go, no, I don't need any help. You know, so it took, and I think it was a trust thing. And so when, when we finally built up some rapport, she started to um, tell her story. Basically, her mum is an alcoholic. Um, Alicia didn't have the boundaries or, or I guess the love and care that you'd normally like would want in a family and she was kicked out of home and shoved around to do like Western Australia to other relatives, you know, so she was basically unwanted by her mother and I guess that's why she ended up on the streets. I was struggling to get accommodation because I was living in refuges when I was pregnant. I was ringing up different refuges and all that sort of stuff. I always got thrown back because it was either too many people were in there and there was not enough room or I wasn't a, the correct category because I was too old to go to a youth refuge or I was too young to go to an adult refuge. One of the things I've learnt with Wesley Mission that you can succeed, it doesn't matter who you are and you've always got someone to talk to here that's always supportive. I feel happier, I feel like I can achieve more so that's why I'm going to try going back to TAFE. When I think of Wesley Mission I think of hope, happiness, support. Wesley means to me my life. If I didn't have them, I wouldn't be here. As I continue in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, I'm very aware of the close link to the preceding passage. One writer called the whole passage Paul's self-description of the missionaries' modus operandi during their visit to Thessalonica. So let me read 1 Thessalonians 2, 9 to 13. Surely you remember, brothers and sisters, our toil and hardship. We worked night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preached the gospel of God to you. You are witnesses, and so is God, of how holy, righteous and blameless we were among you who believed. For you know that we dealt with you as a parent deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting and urging you to live lives worthy of God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. And we also thank God continually because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as a human word, but as it actually is, the word of God, which is indeed at work in you who believed. 
During the visit to Thessalonica, Paul and his companions worked night and day so that they were a burden to no one. This makes sense of some of the early words in the first chapter. He urges the church uh, to follow their lead in living a life which can be described as worthy. Now, worthy doesn't mean um, that they're better than anybody else, but at least they're honourable, they've got integrity. In much of the work we do at Wesley Mission, we value the importance of nurture, particularly with young people, as in that wonderful story of Elisha's life. Young people who don't have access to positive role models in their lives. Paul saw his role amongst the early churches as that of nurturing them into Christian maturity. This is often done in small group work or by care, such as a young person, as we've heard today, in the area of hip hop, who, who sees how they can help another. To be of help to folks in need, one approach is that of always worth of consideration is that of vulnerability. Paul's willingness to be vulnerable with the Thessalonians is evident as he writes. The intimacy of his relationship is evident, in particularly as he talks about the role of a, a mother and father. Most adults who make a significant contribution in the life can refer to people who've helped them. I can certainly look back and see people who helped to mentor me as a young person right outside the church with no link whatsoever and brought me to Christ and kept me on that road when it was so important you could have gone so very, very wrong. Paul didn't want to be a burden on anyone. And this can be discerned time and time again from his writings. But he did want to do a number of things and do them very clearly. He wanted to preach the gospel to them. That was his passion. Uh, he said, we, we read elsewhere in the whole verse, it said, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. Um, he wanted to do that. He knew he had good news to share with others. He wanted to lead by example, as well as instruction. So it's not something he picks from somebody else or somewhere or reads it and says, this is what you should do. He demonstrates it. This is where our word and deed ministry at Wesley Mission is most clear and makes its greatest impression upon people and encourage, comfort and exhort them. So there's lots of aspects uh, to this ministry. Now, I wonder if Paul's words are actually an encouragement about the way we can help journey alongside and encourage those with whom we have a responsibility, a responsibility that's very, very real because we all do have. We know people for whom the journey with them is so critically important. If we just come alongside them and we're not seen as a burden, we're not seen as somebody who's interfering with their lives, we're not sticking our nose into their business, but we are there to help them to grow. The very best understanding of Christian nurture is all bound up with that. Now, I'd want to say to you, you really can make a difference in people's lives if you not only recognise the importance of relationships, but you take on that responsibility in Christ. If you would like to know more about today's topic or for more on Keith's message, contact Keith by writing to Wesley Mission, Post Office Box A5555, Sydney South 1235 or email impacttv at wesleymission.org.au. Thanks for joining us. We leave you with one of my favourites on the show. Lee Cunningham's been with us many times and he's singing on this occasion, Life's Too Short. Till next week, goodbye, great week and God bless you. For dwelling on the things you haven't got Life's too short To think you've only got a little You got a lot Life's too short to live in fear Don't play it safe Don't hide away Life's too short Take a risk Watch your dreams slip away Cause your life's too short to stand for something Life's too short to Spend with you and nothing Hold on tight, stand up strong Cause this ride don't last for long Don't step back, lead the way Your forever starts today
Cause your life's too short Not to stand for something Life's too short To spend with you and nothing Hold on tight, stand up strong Cause this ride don't last for long 